Hello everyone, I'm Chris Gazdick and Craig is our co-host. And welcome to Through a Therapist Eyes, the podcast, where we invite you to see the world through the lens of a real mental health and substance abuse therapist. Our goal is to create emotional growth through the medium of a podcast. Please be aware, though, too, that this is not the delivery of therapy service in any way. But feedback and discussion is not only welcomed, but sought on the website through a therapistize.com. Use the blog tab. So the human emotional experience. Hi, Craig. Hey, Chris. Let's figure this thing out together. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. How about you? Been a rough week. I have been <clears throat> laboring through a bunch of allergies, man, living in North Carolina. Mm. Man, it has not been fun. Doesn't sound like it. <laughs> I, don't have to, I don't have to deal with that. Thank I was God. worried about my voice here, you know, as I never thought about that until I started doing podcasts. You know, you get a cold, you're hacking, coughing and everything. Yeah. You can't do that. Yeah, sounds pretty good right now, though. Well, that's so, good. Yeah, hang it in there. Thank you for the hot tea. Yeah, my pleasure. So what are we doing? What do you, uh, what do you think about our topic here? Well, um, the real issue behind police shootings and violence. Compound trauma. I think it's going to be a good right. one. I, I, I'm interested to hear what, uh, what you got to say to us tonight. Mm-hmm. You know, when I, I had the ideas of doing these, these shows, uh, you know, this was one of the topics that uh, I, I would sit there and just scream to myself on um, the, uh, you know, watching news stories and seeing, um, you know, news story after news story after news story and seeing these people talking about the violence and the, and the, and the you know, the police shootings and all this stuff. And I'm kind of looking at them talking and it's driving me nuts, Craig, because I'm sitting there in my head. And I'm like, man, yeah, racism is a part of this. And, and during no part of the show do I want anybody to get the impression I think it's not, because it is. And gun control is also a part of this. But, you know, we're, we're hitting on a, a pretty hot political topic. Those are definitely hot button items. I mean, and, and, and what do you think I'm sitting there and screaming in my head when it comes to watching these shows and watching these, these people talk about it? I don't know. What are you thinking in your head? Mental health. Mental health. Okay. I mean, mental health. Um, it is, in my mind, a large, a super large high percentage of a mental health issue with these folks. And it just makes my heart bleed for the many, many, many situations that you can just take your dag pick yeah. on a new story. Yeah. And I think you might want to clarify the, 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 the comments earlier. It's about racism and it's about gun control and those things. You know, I don't think all police shootings are um, a result of racism or, or with gun control. I'm, I'm sure those are elements in some of the, in some of the instances that we see. But uh, in, in my mind, I would say that that's not the overall issue. I think what you're saying with mental health is more of an overall issue than probably anything else. Not to, not to say that those other factors aren't a part of it, but I'm not sure they're a part of every instance of the things that we're seeing on the, on the TV. And let's also start, before we even hardly get into this show, uh, you're right, you know, I agree with your thoughts. Uh, let's highly clarify and highly point out that I personally, and I think you do too, very much support our men and women in blue. But today we're not really going to be just talking about our men and women in blue. But they don't get enough support. They don't have enough appreciation and understanding in what it is that they do for us. I'm a high supporter and believer of speaking up for, for them and really all the first responders. Absolutely. Some of my best friends are police officers and first responders. So I, uh, I second you on, on, on that. So to all of our first responders and men and women, in the police force around the country, really, truly thank you for what you do for us every day. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm going to make a simple argument. Here's my argument that I believe we really need to pay attention to. It, it, it is a crucial issue for really our whole society. I believe that, you know, traumatic events have a cumulative effect on any individual that is enduring the traumatic events and that the effects need to be managed with an eye towards mental health of that individual 
on an individualized level. That's the belief I have. That's the argument I want to make. And I want to make a case for that. Okay. Now say that one more time if you don't mind, Chris. Just so I, myself and per- perhaps the audience too is clear on what you're saying. Traumatic events have a cumulative effect on in any, any individual and that those effects need to be managed with an eye towards mental health of, of that individual person. Got it. So you're saying traumatic, repeated traumatic events. So if we're talking about um, maybe not even police officers or first responders, but we hear so much about PSD in our military. PTSD. PTSD, I'm sorry. But we hear so much about PTSD in our military. I mean, those guys, when they do uh, a tour, however long that lasts, you know, six, eight months, a year, every day, a daily basis, they're getting hit with potentially death, you know, at any, at any moment. And so uh, repeated cycles of this is what you're talking about, right? Yes, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, we're going to talk about that. And, and I want to make the point, maybe it's a good point to make now that, you know, we, we do, we think of the military with PTSD. You think of the Vietnam guy who's living in the, in the trailer, going crazy when he hears a gunfire from what is really a car back, what do you call it, back shot or a uh, backfire. backfire. Yeah, a backfire. <clears throat> you know, that's, that's something that we, we really think of. You think PTSD, boom, military. And that's, that's not the case. We're going to talk about PTSD today, but the, it's, it's the chronic and repeated danger of, of events. And, and it doesn't necessarily have to be PTSD. There's actually something called acute stress disorder that's sort of a watered-down version of PTSD. Okay. Not a lot of people realize that that's there. But even then, further down from that is just our human reactions when we see something crazy, something big, something, some sort of an event. And so police officers are every single day. Yes. They have that danger. Yeah. Yeah, so they're risking their lives basically every day as well. The military people might not even have that every day in, in, some, you know, in some theaters. Right. So yeah. I'm just, I'm just yeah. exec- I'm talking about combat I'm, vets who've been exposed to the sure. yeah, war sure. in Afghanistan or the war in Iraq or and something. I'm not taking anything away from that, but I'm just making the point that we really need to understand, change the, the narrative of trauma effect on military exclusively and put it really where it is importantly to understand right here at home on our daily streets because every day they don't know what they face. Right, right. On any call. And so PTSD, though, if we're talking about I know our, our topic is police shootings and, and compound trauma, and perhaps you can define compound trauma force in just a second. But really, you know, what I've come to discover is PTSD is something, like you said, that anybody can uh, be a, a victim of or, or Great, have I, I, as a result of repeated trauma. I have had, it, 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 and it doesn't have to be repeated. It can be, there, we'll, we'll get to that simple trauma and compound trauma and the difference. But, uh, you know, people can have trauma from medical events. You go into a medical procedure, that really can be very traumatic. Yes. Or, or diagnoses. Yes. All you ladies out there. Childbirth. There's a lot of experiences that we have in our daily lives that we really need to pay attention to. Okay. Let me tell you about a story. All right. So years ago, <clears throat> I was uh, living in Chatham County. I moved out of West Virginia and went down to Chatham County. Chatham County, North Carolina? North Carolina, okay. yes, sir. And uh, my friend Pam and I, hey, Pam, if you ever hear this, I haven't talked to her in years. I wonder how she's doing. We went down to a conference. Uh, we have to do continuing education co- uh, credits and you know, stay, keep learning after we're licensed and everything. So we're down there doing this uh, conference all day long. And you know, the conference is done. We hop back in the car, her and I, and we're driving home. It's a... Uh, Probably about a four or five minute drive. So driving along the road, and many of you may have had a similar experience. Uh, we're driving normal pace. Uh, it's kind of a back road, so it's not heavily populated. And we drive up, and we see this weird scene on the side of the road. There's a car. And there's a hazard light on. Like, oh, ooh. And so we slow down. We look at it. And, um, you know, we quickly assess the scene as though there's a problem here and there's not many people around. We need to stop. So we made the decision, you know, kind of a Good Samaritan type thing, if you will. Let's, let's see if we can be of any help. Dude, but the, the scene we stumbled upon was a, I forget how many people were there, two, two cars maybe, uh, maybe a few more stopped after we were there. 
Look down over the hill, and there's this car on its, on its uh, roof, upside down. Wheels were still spinning. We're like, oh my gosh. I, I kind of look down, and there's this, uh, there's a guy, I think, and he's got this lady in his arms, and they're, they're coming up this big steep bank, and uh, there's, there's blood, I remember, kind of. It was like, holy cow. Uh, I looked at Pam and told her, asked her to get some towels or get something, and I, you know, and I ended up being the person, the guy who walked her up, handed her to me. I thought of first aid and whatever, so I kind of took her and, you know, kind of stabilized her neck a little bit and kind of sat her down. And, you know, we're, we're assessing that somebody's talk, talk, screamed about the car still on and is, you know, is it going to blow up? But, you know, they go down. I, I don't know what they did. And, and I'm sitting there with this lady and I'm sitting there face to face with this lady now. And, you know, the, the, she's got a phone. She's, she's frantic. I'm trying to calm her down. You know, my energies kick in trying to figure out, all right, what do we need to do? How does this all work? What, what is the next step? What needs to happen? Talk to her husband on the phone. You know, this was a, this was a big event. And, and those are the, the I'll, I'll spare you all the further details, but uh, the detail is important that she was ultimately okay. And, uh, and nobody was hurt. The car didn't blow up. Uh, but uh, as I said, many people may have had sort of experiences like this, right? Yeah, it was it was a very energizing. That's a key word. It was a very energizing experience. You know, what do you do when you experience something like this? What what happens? Okay, so what kind of traumatic effect did this have on you? I mean, is this something you took away? That some some kind of explain more about how this was a traumatic event. You know, any time. You come across something that's disturbing. Anytime you, you come across something that, you know, you feel that elevated energy, you know, you, you, you have markers. We have markers of things that we look for to, to assess, you know, what are the emotions? What are people experiencing? And, and, and these shows need to be longer, man. I swear we're going to try to keep them short because I want to spend a lot of time too, and we're probably not going to be able to get to it. How do you manage it? What do you do? There's yeah. a natural question at the end of this. What are we supposed to do with police officers and all these first responders? And there's a lot to that. Get uh, attention to it is the main idea today. Yeah. Okay. So you're looking at some of the, you know, some of the, let, let's look at defining some of these things. And, you know, what are, what is it that we're talking about? Trauma. You were just asking me that. So I Googled and prepared some stuff, you know, from my experience and what I've seen and, and, and what's written. And uh, I guess I'm going to try to do a quick, you know, Trauma 101 class okay. to present some things so we have some language. That's a great idea. APA. You ever hear of APA? I don't think I have. They're the big some body in the thing. mental health field. The American Psychological Association. Ah. And we all have associations. Social workers have associations, too. It's called the NASW, National Association of Social Workers. All these legal... and and, and, and groups of people, counselors have their boards and they have their association. But we, a lot of times you'll follow APA, American Psychological Association. They define trauma as a person's emotional response to an extremely negative, disturbing event. Traumatic event thus would be any event that causes trauma. Okay. This episode is talking about compound trauma. Uh, we were talking earlier today, you came up with, uh, what did you find? Yeah, when I Googled compound trauma, most of the things that came back were complex trauma. Complex is another way of yes. referring to it. Uh, combined trauma, uh, uh, people have said. So a lot of those terms are really synonymous. Compound trauma just means that you've had one traumatic event in your life followed either months or years by another, and then maybe another, and another. Okay. Yeah. Typically people... Um, you know, unless they have a special circumstance, like we're talking about the violence with police and, and shootings and stuff, you, you won't have that many traumatic events. You may have a few. Uh, if you come from a rough family or you have bad mental health background that causes a lot of problems, you may have more than a few. Compound trauma with people that we're talking about with all the violence and the elevated emotion that kicks up is really like, as you can imagine, many, 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 many. And, oh, my gosh, that is so complicated to deal with. Therapy fact. Simple trauma is easy to treat, whereas compound trauma is very hard. We all know that as professionals, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when it's extremely compounded. Like I said, for instance, like over a career, you know? Mm -hmm. So we know in therapy world, it's been some research and science studied, 
that simple trauma is just a traumatic event. That's really not that hard to deal with, even in a situation where it's a crazy event. I mean, you are abducted, you are taken as a child, you are um, hurt sexually, you are buried in a pit, eating bugs, not knowing anything for a week, two weeks, three weeks, even a month until you're found. I mean, that's a crazy, doesn't happen very often event, but that is simple trauma. Mm -hmm. That sound crazy? Simple trauma. Simple trauma. Because what we do in therapy is we, we, we recover from those events, we reorganize thoughts, we manage emotions, we, you know, de- de-escalate the energy that you feel on it. And when we're dealing with just one, even when it's a really big one like that, believe it or not, it's not that complicated, it's not that hard. But when you've got an event, and then another event, even it's similar, and then another event, and then another event, well, whoa, you've got emotional, sort of emotional layering, you might think of it, that it just gets more and more and more embedded into, you might say, a worldview of a person. Mm -hmm. So compound trauma can be very difficult to treat, very uh, uh, resurfaces, it it, it, it embeds itself into the, the foundations of the way that you operate in relationships in your day-to-day life. That's a very important thing that we understand, the difference between simple trauma and compound or complex trauma. So just so we're clear, a simple, simple trauma is a one-time event. Compound trauma is multiple events on a, maybe on a consistent basis, but at least over a period of time. It's not just one single event. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> some things that you're going to experience, just some things that we look out for, these kind of characterize PTSD. All right, you got uh, four main categories of things. We'll, we'll just say uh, re-experiencing the event, avoiding uh, situations in the event that, that remind you of the event, hyperarousal is a key word, and then negative thoughts and beliefs. Okay? Those are just some things that we look for. Okay? So when you're experiencing a traumatic event, even if you don't have PTSD, you very well will experience some of these things. You, 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 will, you will experience the... the um, well, let's go through them real quick. Re-experiencing the... Okay, go ahead. So hold on. You're saying you may experience some of these symptoms. Correct. And not have PTSD. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just part of human emotional reaction. As I said in the beginning, right? Any individual that experiences a traumatic event is going to have emotional reactions from it. Okay. Yeah. Right. Makes sense. So we look for a certain level of emotional reaction and, and, and a high level of emotional reaction, let's say, and we call that PTSD. Lower level reaction and, and things that we look for, we're going to call it acute stress disorder, and then we'll, we'll call a lower level from that or typically things that we'll experience. Okay. Everyone's on the scale. Right. You can't go through a traumatic event and not be on scale, I would think. You know, At least some level. At least some level. Okay. And again, Think about that for first responders. Maybe you don't have PTSD or even acute stress disorder, but you go on your first call and you get a crazy event, you're going to have a reaction. Yeah. You can't not. Right. And then you have another reaction. You kind of can't not. Mm-hmm. You see where we're going? Right, right. And you so go to another one and another one. Trauma. Now, you, Yeah, now you start having normal reactions that a human being would have in a situation that it begins to build on itself. Now you probably are starting to develop really signs and symptoms that we can actually diagnose of acute stress disorder. We ain't even gotten to PTSD yet. Okay. It's just the way human emotions work. So some of the things we look for, again, I want to get out real quick, uh, trauma 101. Uh, experiencing, re-experiencing is, one, is the first big category. You may have upsetting thoughts. You might have memories. Uh, you begin to have a little bit of flashbacks on the events, um, strong feelings when something is a reminder of what happened, physical responses with any reminder, so your heart rate gets elevated. You, know, you just get a little bit worked up. Mm-hmm. Avoidance of a situation. You might avoid people that remind you of things. You might avoid places that remind you of that uh, that happened to you. Uh, trying to be too busy to avoid memories. You know, just sort of. Uh, you mentioned you talk a lot about monkey brain. Uh, avoiding conversations about the event. How do you not avoid conversations as a normal police officer or you know a, a trauma treatment? provider on a main ambulance mm-hmm. you're gonna go home and say hey honey how are you yeah okay uh, how was your day oh good yeah mine was mine was fine yeah mine was just fine <laughs> arms and legs and stuff were missing but it's fine yeah oh, no right. it's not anyway okay yeah, it's not fine hyper arousal trouble sleeping you get irritable you have difficulty concentrating 
you kind of feel this on guard feeling, feeling on guard. That's going to happen when you're dealing with a lot of people day in and day out that don't like you. Mm -hmm. Police officers deal with a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, Feeling on guard, being jumpy, being easily startled. Uh, Last big category, negative thoughts and beliefs. You have a hard time with specific memories of events. You might lose interest, a little depression begins to sip in. You feel distant from others. Uh, You feel just a sense of not really being happy. Uh, We talk about work burnout. So all of these things put together, you may have some of them, you may have a lot of them. We diagnose, and that's a whole other uh, story, but those are some of the things that people will experience day in and day out. How do you deal with that? That's a big question. How do you deal with all those things? Gun control is important. Racism is important. But when you're not equipped and you're not prepared, and we're not looking at this from a mental health perspective, I'm going to submit to you that oftentimes people get triggered in situations where they are massively elevated with a life and death situation, kill or be killed. We have no idea, non people that haven't experienced that, what that must be like day in and day out. Mm-hmm. You know, Baltimore is on, you know, the news a lot. I know I don't want to pick any particular story because they're all very similar and, and there's particulars for each situation. But I'm really wanting and glad that we have this kind of a show to bring awareness to this. Because I think we as a society have got to get it together and have people prepared that are dealing with this on a professional level. Because I see it, that it affects marriages. It, it affects people, individuals. It affects the execution of, of, of policing and, and what are some of the other first responders? I mean, firefighters. You know, firefighters. My, my, my cousin is an EMT. And uh, some of the stories he's told me about coming up on wrecks, like you're talking about, and the, and the, and the condition he finds people's bodies in in, in these scenes is just horrific. I have one that I told you about with the wreck, back to that. I felt energy as I was telling you that. Yeah. I can go back to that event. I saw the car. It was gray. I saw the woman's face as I was describing that a little bit. Right. So, so Chris, what do people, if, you, if you're a police officer or first responder of some sort, I mean, is it, what, what, how do you start dealing with this stuff? Is it find a therapist? I mean, is it, what, what, is, what is your recommendation to people? You know, there's a lot of recommendations, and I know that's why I said it to start, man. I, these shows can be much longer because we, uh, there's a lot to answer that question with, and, and it's important. Uh, a few things, or certainly talk about it. We have debriefings that people have to do in the military, and uh, you have write-ups, and if you have particular difficult situations, you might take leaves of absence. Uh, you know, there, there are some things that, that our organizations currently do. I don't want to give the impression this is completely unaddressed. Mm-hmm. But I might make the statement it's completely inadequately addressed. Now, that's, that might be controversial, right? but I think I might be willing to make that statement. That we, we do address it, but not completely adequately at all. Right, right. And it's causing problems, yes. big problems. Now, do you know, and, and, and I'd like to maybe re- revisit this topic at some point and, and maybe interview or have, a, have, a, have one of those yeah, folks we talked on about our that. show. We've got some people that we could ask to come on and speak we directly did. to these things. But do you know if uh, do do police departments and military? I know the military has some some level of uh, support for veterans who come back home. They're is, trying. Are, are there Craig, things out trying. there for for these guys to tap into, or what? They're trying, but first of all, there's great resistance from the individual themselves. Yeah, yeah. Okay? I, th- I think we've talked about that before a little okay, bit. Maybe like, in our intro, is people think you know therapy's for wimps, right, or, or whatever you know, right, man. And and these are just, I mean. The main purpose of this episode today is to bring awareness and to elevate our understanding that it needs to happen because it's causing our society at large problems, and it's not their fault Mm -hmm. entirely, Mm -hmm. not being any specific situation, but they're not adequately uh, given preparation for this, that it's, and they resist it themselves. So a willingness to engage, there are things called EAP services, employee assistance programs, 
where uh, cities will, will afford them the opportunity to attend a therapy experience. Uh, some will, will seek it out themselves, family and friends, church, prayer, uh, meditation, managing emotion. Boy, there's a lot of things I can rip off to say, you know, off the top of my head of, of really what do we need to do? What do we need to do? There's a it's lot. It's an interesting topic, and I, and I think probably, you know, from what I'm hearing you say is we're talking about police officers, first responders, we've mentioned the military, but really anybody who's experienced some level of traumatic event Yes, could be suffering from... PTSD or P- PTSD. I don't know why I keep saying PSD. It's all right. I but love P- it. But, but PTSD like symptoms. I mean, I don't either have to be a police blown, officer or a firefighter. Either full blown PTSD EMT. or acute stress syndrome or lesser than that. All that means is you have less of the symptoms, a, a, a normal reaction. Yeah. In a lot of sense, PTSD is normal. Yeah. Now that sounds like it. I mean, who it, hasn't had some level of traumatic event in their life? I now, mean, I life is not easy ways, or peachy but, keen, right? Right. So I'm sure that people who are listening to our show, even if you're a single mom or a, or whatever, you know, or just the average Joe, you've had some level of trauma, you know, in your own life, whether it's life threatening or not. Right. You know, I, I can think of a few examples in my own life of things that have happened to me in recreational type activities that have scared me. That have scared me. Listen. I would be very nervous to play softball right now. You know why? Because I had a traumatic event when I busted my arm. Two plates and 12, 12 screws later and a big bulge in my right forearm <laughs> leads me to be very anxious at playing softball, which I'd love to do. Yeah. Yeah, I tell you, this is, might be a really stupid example, but I took a scuba diving class one time, and we had to go down to the bottom of the pool and take our mask off. And I, I was, not, nothing really happened, but it was just a really uncomfortable experience for me having that mask off. Mm-hmm. Now the thought of being down there at the bottom of that pool, you know, with no mask on, still it still kind of makes me a little bit jittery. Like like you said about the example with the car wreck, and that's a big so thing. So it could be something really silly like that 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 you know that you have some kind of issue with. And you might think it to be silly, but the way that the people are experiencing, and honestly, when we're experiencing, when we're in the middle of that, our emotions do not feel silly. You can feel no, they very don't. They're not desperate yeah. with it. Yeah. It's scary. Oh, yeah. It's very scary. And the more intense a situation, if there's something similar to that situation you experienced, you're right back in it. Yes. And now you're in a fight to survive. Yes. You really can be in a fight to survive. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, what, so what, right? So what do we do as a society? We really need to be aware and seek treatment and develop industry strategies to help those affected by compound trauma so that they can cope with the distress. Yeah. And let me, let me take that a little bit further, Chris. We talk about what can we do as a society? Because, you know, I think a lot of people on one side or the other want to pass laws or whatever to solve problems. But really, man, the change starts with the individual. If I want to change society, I have to change myself. So it, in my opinion, and you're the therapy expert over here, I don't want to take over the show. You're fine. But in my opinion, you have to come to some level of self-awareness to say, hey, I need to do this. This is something I have to take on. You know, I'm experiencing these issues, and I need to figure out what to do to get myself back in a better place. And I think I that's how we change society. <clears throat> we, we raise our own level of awareness and take responsibility. And if we all do that as individuals, it changes society overall. I agree. And in addition, though, the reason why I'm saying industry standards, because when you have a particular industry that's particularly affected, such as a lot of our first responders with fire and rescue and police, yeah. these, these no. industry standards need to be developed so that we really, as a society and as a city and as a unit, support each other and support them in that. Yeah, no, I agree. I think those programs should be set up and available to, 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 to those folks. And, and, you know, whether it's in the police departments or fire departments or wherever, you know, corporate America, you know, I know that I have some experience there. And we have programs, we've had programs like that in, in corporate America. But, you know, if, if uh, you know, if I'm Johnny Q. Law and I've got that program out there that I can go to, I have to be the one that makes a decision to go take advantage of it, you know. And if I'm mandated to go in there and sit in front of you as a therapist, you know, I can take advantage of that time or I can sit there and for an hour with my mouth shut. You know? we're, so we're agreeing really, 
But I want to I want to point out uh, super quick. I know we're on time. You know, there was a a a, a, a training that I went to, and they were uh, set up, called in, and set up after a mass uh, violence event to help in, uh, a, a, like an employee committed suicide or something like that happened. And uh, these EAP folks were called in to be trauma professionals, and they set them up in an office and went up in to the building and sat there and waited all day long. I think Nobody. they talked to one person. Nobody showed, right? Nobody showed. Yeah. Day was done. They left the building, came down steps, walked outside. There's all the people. Guess what they're doing? Talking, processing, coping. And that lady in this conference taught us. She learned, we don't need to be in this office. So what I'm saying is, yeah, it is that individual person identifying it and reaching out, but we have to go to them too and reach out. We have yeah, to yeah. go to them and recognize that. that these these industry standards can be developed so that it's more normal. It's, it needs to be a normal part of what it's what we do, so that a person that's affected doesn't have to deal with the stigmas, and they can just that's what we do. Yeah, when I'm, we debrief, that's a part of the way it goes, and it's a whole whole developed process and program. Yeah, I think we're on the same page, Chris. All right, man. It's an important topic. And it is a very again important topic. To all of the men and women that that serve us. Absolutely, absolutely. Very glad to get this word out. Yeah, well, I'd like to revisit again at some point, like you said, and have a guest on who can speak to some of these things from the from the real world. So what are so we going to we'll do have, next time? We'll do that time? in the future. So next time, I think we're going to talk about how to quiet the mind. It's a little bit of an idea that I had to follow up these two emotional talks that we've had with the story of, of, of Aaron's story and, um, you know, the violence that's in our society. Mindfulness, I thought, came to me as a good, good therapy topic, a good mental health topic. Yes. You know, quieting the mind is a big part of how we cope. It is, absolutely. Looking forward to that topic next time. So take us out, Craig. What do these guys need to do? Thanks, yeah, for, thanks, is, for, thanks is, for talking with yeah, us. Yeah, I'm uh, happy to be here. And um, if you guys are loving the show, if you're liking the show, we would appreciate if you would go to iTunes and give us a five-star review. And also subscribe to our podcast. That'll help us get found in search results so we can get the word out and um, help other people and educate other people on mental and emotional health. So we'd appreciate you do that. If you want to find out more about Chris or myself or our show, through with therapistize.com is our website, and we have links to all of our social media on the website. We've also got an email list. We'd love for you guys to sign up so we can keep you updated that way too. And um, I think that's a wrap, Chris, unless you have anything else. Fantastic. We'll see you next week. Great. Thanks a lot, folks.